All right, now, everybody, quiet, listen to me. We're going to start a show. You're listening to the Ink and Paint Club Podcast, your weekly animation discussion show. You can find episodes every week on the show's YouTube page, and if you like the show, subscribe and share it with your friends. Because that would be pretty rad. Hey everybody, it's time for another Ink and Paint Club Podcast. On the YouTubes. Guess what, everybody? Yeah. Yes, that's the only place I post this at the moment. Oh yeah, by the way, everyone, hey, Kyle's back. I'm back from, his from long... outer space. <laughs> are you gonna are you gonna sing the whole song? No, I'm not a dog. <laughs> remember dog. from Men in Black? Uh, I do Frank remember dog. that. Remember Men in Black? I've been watching South Park lately. Anyway, uh, my name is. My name is JD. I am your host, and over there, on the other side of the country, is Kyle. I used my... to be the host for like a month. <laughs> Were you the host? I don't know. I don't know anymore, <laughs> man. Oh, Kyle's my best good friend. I'm the bestest. Yeah. And the um, friendliest. Sure. Um. <laughs> anyway. Um. So, uh, this week. Uh, we're not actually going to be talking about cartoons, uh, because due to another internet reviewer, I was made aware that both Double Dare and Legend of the Hidden Temple had their big, like, reunion whatever anniversary thing over the weekend. Um, and so literally like, no one cared. <laughs> well, I'm sure some people did. I um, sure didn't. But... Yeah, so <laughs> I like thought it'd be like interesting because I liked Legends of the Hidden Temple as a child. So let's look at these and see what went wrong. <laughs> um, so if you're unaware, or if you're too young to remember, which would make me feel really old, uh, back from like the mid '80s to mid to late '90s, Nickelodeon was just flush with game shows. And then Cartoon Network did it years later and did it worse. Um, <laughs> Hole in the wall. <laughs> God. Wasn't that just a carryover from some Japanese game show? Yeah. Yeah. That was weird. But Nickelodeon used to have, like, all these kind of offbeat game shows for kids. Filmed at Universal Studios, of all places. That, that building... Was, I think that was their whole live-action thing. Department? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That building is still there. They just painted over it. Yeah, that's kind of sad. And they, and they took out the slime fountain. <laughs> I'm sad now. Well, slime um, doesn't grow on trees, man. <laughs> no, it's manufactured in a factory. Um, so, Kyle, what, what did you watch Nickelodeon game shows as a child? Uh, I mean, there was like better shit on. And if not, this was the time of Super Nintendo, so kind of not really. I, no. didn't, I wasn't into the whole uh, live action stuff, but I mean, I, I used to watch that shit to see what prizes they would win and be like, oh, that's cool. That's it. <laughs> yeah, it's looking back on it now, because sometimes I'll just put like an old episode of Hidden Temple on if I can find an actual one on YouTube. And I'll like, you can win like... Craft macaroni or a trip to space camp. And I'm like, wow, she, these are horrible. Your own yeah. phone, a color TV. And I'm Here's like, a new shit. bike. And it's like, that's what any kid wanted those I days. Guess. A fucking bike. The er, the mid 90s were a simpler time. Here's a telescope. Right. But, um. So you didn't watch any of these game shows? I, I mean, I wasn't like religiously into them, but I did. Oh. From time to time. Which ones did you see? I liked, uh... Was it Nick Arcade was cool? Yeah! Uh... I don't know if What Would You Do was considered a fucking game show. I think that was just, like, fucking with people on the street. I don't remember. Didn't they turn that into, like, a... Didn't they, like, they made another one of those a couple of years ago and it was, like, super serious about, like, 
weird social situations. I don't remember at all. Like, they would have someone act, like, really racist in public and see if anyone would stand up to them. Oh. That was Something probably, like, like, some different shit. I mean, it's I think it was called What Would You Do? Well, no. No. no but... It's not the Nickelodeon branding. That was, like, fucking... Yeah. Fucking generic What Would You Do? Right. But, um... I'm trying to think. Yeah. There was also some other show, and they used to have celebrities on it, and it was, like... Guts. No... But I do remember, they used to have, like, a, a show, it was like a, what was it, like, American Gladiator, but for kids? Was it Guts? Maybe. Because that was, like, before that whole block existed, I think. Then there used to be, uh, there was another show, it was like a game show, and I think they had to do, like, they showed off special talents, and then they did, like, solving puzzles or something? I don't know. Figure it out? Yes! I Holy love that shit! Shirt. That with, was pretty awesome. With Summer Sanders. Yeah. She was hot. She was fucking gorgeous. I love Summer Sanders. What's she doing these days? She's Let's probably see. like dead. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. What about Wild and Crazy Kids? I liked Wild and Crazy Kids. That show was cool. I honestly don't remember like i know that was a thing okay so here's the thing kyle and i were talking before the show kyle is one year older than i am but i feel like the things he talks about like i swear we were born 10 years apart (laughs) because kyle you seem like very much a child of the 80s and i'm very much a child of the 90s (laughs) well i was just 89 i mean i know that's what i'm saying it's like it's weird that you seem to be into these things that should have been like way older like, but we're only a year apart, so. Slime Time Live? Slime Time Live? That. I don't remember, I remember that being a thing. I don't remember what it was about. Um, yeah, so that was cool. Let me um, see, Figure It Out, Finders Keepers, Double Dare, My Family's Got Guts, Nick Arcade, Paradise Run, You're On. I haven't even heard most of these. Yeah. What would you what do, it you? says. Hey, what man. would you do as a game show, which is weird? Wild and Crazy Kids was fun. There's like a million fucking kids going through obstacle courses and shit. I gotcha. But, um, so yeah, the whole takeaway was that Nick had a bunch of of game shows back in the day, and they don't really do that anymore. Uh, until now! Uh, yeah. Because what's old is new again, because 30 years has passed. Right, so I guess we can just get into this now. Okay, so we're going to be talking about two things um, today. So we'll get into the first one. The first thing, uh, so Double Nickelodeon's Double Dare is, I guess, 30 years old this year. Jesus. I know, right? It's older <laughs> than I am. Um, but, okay, so I guess, I, and I guess this aired on Nick at Night, I think, what I was told. I don't, I don't remember cables. that. I remember seeing it when I was no, no. Oh, like oh, after I guess school I, and shit. I get. I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. It was on Nickelodeon, yeah. but in honor of the 30th anniversary of Double Dare, uh, they got back the original host and his sidekicks uh, to basically do this reunion special, that and that aired on. Like and, shit. Uh, yeah. Everybody uh, but, looked like shit. I don't know. No one has aged gracefully in this world. Uh, but no, they 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 got everybody back, and they were doing this, uh, you know, 30th anniversary un- reunion special. And I think it aired what I what I heard was on Nick at Night. Um, so it was like very much geared towards like the people who were, grew up with Double Dare, not for children today. Which I guess I can kind of appreciate, but um, yeah, it was it was odd watching this because. Uh, I, I like I never watched Double Dare growing up because I think it was like right before my time. Um, like I think like because I remember Family Double Dare being and I remember Double Dare two thousand very briefly, um, but I never watched the original because I think that like it ended right about when I became coherent in this life. Before um, you gained sentience. 
more or less. My my memory starts around ninety five ish. Um so anything before that I don't remember unless I actively went out and sought it sought it out when I'm younger. But so for this reunion special, I guess they like I said, they got like the original host, Mark Summers, they got the original announcer guy, they got Mark's uh assistant lady. And like we said, they have not aged gracefully. <laughs> I mean, They're all fat and old. Right. And, but what was kind of interesting about this is what, what they, they were aiming this more towards the older fans who were fans of Doubled there. So they set all this up in a nightclub. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of odd, but you know, and it's got, you got like all the, cra- instead of having like a crowd in like a, in bleachers or whatever, or like in an audience or whatever. It's just like these people around a pit and they're all drinking and you know, they're all, you know, our age or older, like people like 25 to 30. Like how they kept saying in an undisclosed nightclub. It's like, just fucking tell us, man, it doesn't matter. It's some nightclub in Cal in LA. I'm sure. Um, Maybe. Right. But it was even kind but what was kind of even nice from that is that, uh, they had like like in Double Dare, they had like you know the red team and the blue team, so each team had like I assume two people they pulled from the audience. I guess they just seemed like normal people, but then the, <laughs> the other two, two... <laughs> the two people that wouldn't come back from all that, they're like fuck, we need to think quick. <laughs> That's what it seemed like, right? And yeah, so the other two members of each team were made up with old cast members from all that. So it was like Lori Beth Denberg and Josh, what's his name? Server. Yeah. I like Josh Sherber. Come on. Now. Yeah. I couldn't remember his last name. Um, Danny Temporelli from Pete and Pete, who was also on all that, I guess. He who also did not age. <laughs> yeah. No, he's, he's just like, age- fuck, dude. <laughs> what happened? Li- been living under a freeway for 30 years. <laughs> I guess. It's the first thing they've called him up to do since the show ended. And I like how they're like, oh, and we got Kel Mitchell, too. And he's all like, yeah, guys. But what happened sh- to Keenan? Like, Keenan's like, nah, dude, I ain't doing that shit. <laughs> Keenan's on SNL. He, ain't, he doesn't need this. Like, that shit's beneath me, man. I mean, Fucking I'm su- reunion tour. I'm surprised they got, like, them both back to do, a, like, a Good Burger sketch on Jimmy Fallon a couple months ago. Oh, that's right. They seem like they fucking hate each other, though. I don't know what's going on between them. I don't think they hate each other. I think it's just they went on in different directions. They were made for each other. They were the Black Spade and Farley team. They're... I I, I imagine Keenan and Kel, had they stayed together, is what Key and Peele is now. Like, I figured that's what they would go on to do. That was their branch evolution? More or less. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, it was funny when they introduced Kel and is like, "Hey, I've got a, I've got a, I'm, I'm on a show on Nickelodeon right now that we're filming a second season for." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, I forgot Nickelodeon does really shitty live action TV shows still." It was like literally what? <laughs> Nobody cares about that shit. I know. <laughs> uh, so it was, it was interesting them seeing them do this. Um. And so I mean they they had all the staples they had like the obstacle course with the the big nose and the big teeth and the the big hamster wheel it, like it was you do- funny it was funny cuz they're like we interviewed people on the street and then they're like fucking slapping people in the face on the street and stuff with pies that's not how, that's not how you interview people mark summers i i would be so rage filled like my limited edition clothes what the fuck is wrong with you well i'm sure they asked them ahead of time if they could do that it's all staged i would be so mad but no um i remember a long time ago when i went to universal studios i was picked in a crowd for like they were doing i think it was double dare live or some stupid shit like that sure and i was picked to be like on stage doing stuff and i was like no I'm gonna walk around with fucking pie all over my shit. I don't care if you're gonna give me a telescope or not. I'm not gonna look like a fucking faggot. <laughs> Whoa. But yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't want any of that. 
Right. I like my clothes, man. I spent a lot of money on that shit. <laughs> dry cleaning, dry cleaning costs money. You can't pay him with a telescope. Have you tried? I don't think they would take it. I don't know. So, okay, so so they they're doing this whole thing, and it's in a nightclub, and they've got, you know, it, it's it's kind of a cool setup, and because this is the thirtieth anniversary of Double Dare. They spent, like, half the time, like, here's old clips, and here's, like, people sharing memories of Double Dare. And I guess they had, they had like, this celebrity, uh, well, celebrity, I put in big quote fingers, uh, people taking the Double Dare challenge, which basically means to pie themselves in the face. Uh, so, like, Mario Lopez was on there, like, two of the people from either Backstreet Boys or NSYNC, I don't remember which ones are which. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, they, and I, I think there was like an NFL person that did it. And there, I think there was a couple others, uh, Here's but it was Mario Lopez, Who but it was, fuck? it was so weird because at the beginning of the special, they said, and special guest appearance by all of these people. And literally it was just for that segment where they, they just it's, filmed yeah. videos off their phone of them pying themselves in the face. <laughs> it was so weird. Um, but so that was cool. I, I like that they were like, you know, interviewing people like, what's your memories of this thing? And like showing old clips from like the 80s of like them goofing or like the host goofing around with each other. So it was nice. Um, but and here's where the my crux of this, this, this comes to the crux of it. I feel like this was kind of a half measure for what they should have done. Like it was half ass. Kinda I don't want to say it was half assed, it was just not it was not as big a deal as it could have been, I guess. Because um okay, so Mel and I went up to see our uh our friend Justin's who you probably he did a he did a thing for our, our creepypasta thing, and I think it was on our Frozen review and in, in our Pokemon Go episode, so you know who he is. He's um, cool. Justin is cool. You'll meet him at the wedding in June. And you'll all be best friends. But, yeah. um, so, Justin lives up in uh, Minneapolis, and that's where the Mall of America is. And the Mall of America has, like, a Nickelodeon theme park in the middle of the mall. Um, which, admittedly, is, is kind of cool. Um, they don't have a whole lot of older stuff, even though it was weird. So we went in there, and they had signs for thing signs up saying oh we have like it's it was like for the splat which is like nickelodeon's attempt at cashing in on nostalgia uh by bringing back all the old cartoons and all the old stuff and they had signs all over the mall saying oh yeah we're doing splat events all summer and whatever and we couldn't find any like old school merchandise in the entire thing i think we found like a, a stimpy cup that was about it <laughs> um but what i was getting to is that <laughs> uh they had a live show set up where it was a double dare live show but it was contained in like this 100 foot by 100 foot rope or you know gated off area and it had like the big nose and it had like that weird roller thing that you have to you know slide through (laughs) and i mean it was like the most bare bones of double dare daring that you could do and I get it because it was like, it's for this quick 20 minute thing that you do for people at a mall. That's fine. It's like, it's the portable version. So they got like these. It's the home I, version. <laughs> so it's the home version. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, and Mel was so disappointed because she really wanted to go up and be one of the contestants. But apparently you had to be like under the age of like 12 to do it. That's dumb. So they pick. I know. That's so they pick, ages. It is. I, I, Mel was so excited. Um. <laughs> But they got these two little boys to go in, and they had to answer trivia. Honestly, I probably wouldn't have done any better because they were asking like, "What is Justin Bieber's last album?" Blah blah blah, a bunch of pop culture, modern pop culture stuff that I don't know. Like, what is this show on Nickelodeon right now? What is the name of this sister's character on this show on Nickelodeon? Like, I don't watch that. I don't know. <laughs> what is I... who the fuck cares? <laughs> it's not Jeopardy. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but you know, it was. It was kind of cool, 
Because it's like, oh, it's this quick little thing that you can show off and, you know, you know, get on people's nostalgia. I'm sure there's a couple of parents in the audience uh, that remember it and thought it was kind of cool. But my problem with this big reunion thing that they did was that I feel like it was kind of just a small step up from that mall thing. Because it was, like, in this pit. There was no, like, big stage. It was just these props set up in a pit at a nightclub. Um, with no really cohesiveness to it. And it just seemed like, okay, we're just doing, like, this small little event for, you know, for Double Dare. And that's fine. It's but basically what it was. Yeah. There was and nothing at stake. Right. It just felt like... But it's like... I felt like they were trying to, they made it sound like it was a bigger deal than it ended up being. Like, they were trying to make it as like, oh, it's it's 30 years, and we're so excited to be back, because we got the original host, and we got the cast of all that. You remember those guys, and we got all the stuff from the show, and we got people in Double Dare shirts and stuff. Um, I don't know. It seemed... They, they probably had a shoestring budget. Like I mean, they... they $10. <laughs> God, they even made a joke about that in there because like they were showing like footage from the original pilot episode. And they're like, we had such a shoestring budget that it looked like all of our props were made out of actual shoestrings. <laughs> yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. But oh god, it they, was just, they actually yeah. probably did have that. Yeah. Um. But it's, it's 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 so it's that it's like it seemed like they were trying to hype this up to be a bigger thing, and then when they actually showed you what it was and like oh that's all it is um but and then the other thing that was bugging me about this i felt like we got the like the cliff notes version of the event yeah like they were rushing through all of the actual game show parts of like let's just go 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 and then they would cut to they would like try to cram in like oh and here's all the retrospective stuff because this entire short was a half hour long um I felt like this should have been at least an hour. I mean, if they weren't going to cut back... If they're going to cut back and forth, they needed more time. Or to make these two separate things, like, do a half-hour thing where it's just, like, the game show and then do, like, a little retrospective thing after it. Um, Sounds about right. Kyle, how did you feel about this? I feel like I've been talking a lot. It was the weirdest thing I've ever masturbated to, for sure. Jesus Christ. Um, it was fine. It was whatever. I wasn't invested in it. I wasn't like, oh my god, Double Dare. I used to watch that. Holy shit. My childhood wasn't like that. I didn't care, man. And these guys from all that, they're fucking a phone call away. They ain't hard to get. (laughs) It wasn't a big event. I mean, other than Kel Mitchell, I mean, who of them has been an active actor? in the last 20 years that's true but you gotta commend that they they're like still professional in a sense they haven't like gone to shit like other child actors drugged out yeah it's true well they weren't part of on to the next thing because i have to go to work okay fine (laughs) so So the other thing that Nick decided to parade out on this, and I wasn't a fan of Double Dare, so I wasn't nearly as offended by that, but this next thing, man, the more I watched about it, the more I had to just audibly groan. (laughs) So so we heard about this a a while back, that they were making this, uh, but Nick decided that they were going to bring back Legends of the Hidden Temple, which... Is personally my favorite Nick game show. I watched the shit out of that show as a kid. Um, I wanted to be on that show, um, but they were instead of like doing what they did with Double Dare and doing like an anniversary recreation of the game show, they're gonna make a live action TV movie based on the show. And that's it went about as well as that sounds. <laughs> uh, Kyle. You like you told me earlier you watched about five minutes of this and gave up. <laughs> yeah, because that kid was just so passionate about oh, God. the fucking temple, and I'm like, okay, I'm out. Okay. Right. I tapped out. 
God. Fucking autistic kid. Like, I, oh my God, I, this fucking temple. It's all I like got, this, guys. I got through the entire hour, and it was painful, but... Okay, so, if you're thinking to yourself, how the hell do you turn a game show into an hour-long plot-based movie? I'll tell you how they did it. I'm not going to say it was good. Um, so, I guess this family goes to Mexico and goes to this theme park that is based around this, the, the quote-unquote hidden temple. And it's weird that they call it the hidden temple. It's not like some weird, they actually gave the temple a name or anything. It's just the hidden temple. And it's my just God. like my my whole fucking uh, what is that thing called? Where you're like immersed to it, but then like something goes. What is that word where you get I, taken out of it? The illusion was broken or something. Yeah, there's a word for it though. Yeah, the I, whole I thing know. was like we built a theme park around this. I'm like, what the fuck is this Jurassic Park? This is dumb as shit. Right. So there's like. These three, these three siblings, and the one boy is like has a super boner for the legends of the hidden temple. And my God, does he like to say the title of the show over and over again? <laughs> this kid who wasn't even alive when it was fucking. I know shown. he's like, cause he, because, <laughs> and I feel so bad because they actually. Again, they got the original host of Legends of the Hidden Temple to be in this movie, and he was like a tour guide. He's the tour guide for the park, which I is like that's that's cool. They got the original host back, but my God, I want to know if he how enthusiastic what he was because I feel bad for him for being in this garbage <laughs> pile. But and it's like there's this part where this kid comes up to him and he starts talking. He's like, he's like, I'm just obsessed with Legends of the Hidden Temple, and I'm like, kid, you weren't alive for this. Yeah. Kid, hide your power level, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, he, like, nerds out on him. Because I guess the whole thing is, like, the, the ancient civilization that owned the temple has been locked away in this temple and nobody can go in there. But after he nerds out on Kirk Vogg, Kirk Fogg, the, the host guy, he's like, all right, well, here's a map for the temple. Just hold on to this forever. Long story short, they all wind up in the temple. And then they talk to Olmec, the giant head, who they got D. Bradley Baker back because give D money and he'll do whatever because he's a voice actor. Yeah. Uh, but that was cool that they got D back and they actually made a big, convincingly CG Olmec head. And I thought I thought that was kind of cool. The rest of this, however, <laughs> were they like, I can't figure out the monkey. How do you? Did they make uh, a joke about that or? No? Okay. Okay. So if you haven't watched Legends of the Hidden Temple, if you're too young or just didn't watch it, there. So the whole the ending part of the game show that you'd have to go through the temple run, which is this big maze like th- structure where it had a bunch of different rooms and each room had a puzzle or whatever, and there was one room that had the shrine of the silver monkey, <laughs> and it was this three piece monkey statue you had to assemble to get out of the room and for whatever reason no child could get this on the first try (laughs) and it's so easy it's like feet body head i I know but it's like okay so to recreate that frustration in the movie it is a good like 10 minute scene it is a good almost like eighth of this movie focused on this joke because they go in and like all right because they were like, they find the monkey shrine. It's like, okay, we need to put this thing together so we can get out of this room. And they're like, there's no traps or whatever. It's like, no, it's just the three pieces. They're trying to make it set up like it's going to be this really simple thing they could do. And they try putting the monkey together like four times. So it's like, why is this so difficult? And then it literally does a SpongeBob title card four hours later. <laughs> and they still haven't got the monkey together. <laughs> that's retarded. I like, I, I laugh. I commend them for making a joke, but that's so dumb. I know. It went on. Like, I, I was laughing at the beginning because, like, ah, that's funny. Like, cause the silver monkey thing is so simple but yet impossible. Um, they took the joke too far? It, it went on for too long because then they have, like, this emotional moment. I say emotional. Uh, where the kids are talking about, like, well, you're the parent's favorite. No, you're the parent's favorite. And the monkey sells them and solve. They're still stuck in this room. And then they wake up. And they just like, oh wait, it's just on backwards. And they literally just flip the the butt around, and, and they it works. Wow, I guess. And but this scene goes on for like a good five ten minutes. But holy <laughs> shit! But 
So, so like, all right, guys, we got ten minutes to kill. How do we do this? More Let's or just less. make the monkey really hard. It would right. be funny. But this movie was. I I don't want to say offended because that means I got I got angry about it, but it offended me in a in a sense that like it made me sad because this movie is like it's trying again it's trying to translate a game show into a plot, but. It's Just like a bun- they translated board game into a fucking movie. Hey, Clue is a good movie, <laughs> but that's an outlier. But this movie is basically it's a series of callbacks. That's all it is. It's like it's it's almost Family Guy level of like remember this, uh, because they're going through the temple and going to these different rooms. And then these animals will show up to like either attack them or it'll just be a whatever. So they're in this room and they're like, oh my God, it's a red jaguar because that was a team on the show. And they have a sidekick monkey who is green because a green monkey was one of the other teams. They're, and they and they literally just call these things out. It's like, oh my God, it's a purple parrot. Oh my God, it's a silver snake. Oh my God, it's a blue barracuda. And they would just <laughs> say these things like, oh, that's what that is. And I'm like, yes, I get it. It was a, it was a, that was one of the team names. Good job. <laughs> Were, but, were they like, oh no, it's the guards? Uh, I mean, the temple guards were, uh, you know, in there. There's this whole plot about, I guess, King Olmec was a king back in the day, and he had two sons. And the reason that the pendant of life thing that they have, you need to get out to to win the temple run game, was split in half because Olmec had two sons. One was evil. One was good. And I guess if you had the pendant together, you could rule the world or some bullshit. I don't know. Like, so Olmec, <laughs> Olmec uses his weird Mayan magic to turn his entire civilization to stone until the pendant is put back together. And uh, so they, they, they go through all the, the, the trials and like, yes, these are all rooms from the game show. Good job. Uh, they get to the treasure room where the last piece of the pendant is. They've been chased by the temple guards and Olmec's evil son or whatever. Um, and then they're like, okay, you got three minutes to get out of the temple before it, like... Because I, I, there was this whole thing where it's like, okay, once you get two pieces of the pendant, you got three minutes to get the pendant back to Olmec. Or else the everyone goes back to stone or whatever. Or you're trapped in the temple forever. Which is that, that's what you had to do in the show. Is like, once you got the, t- the pendant of life, you get three minutes to get out of the maze, you have to take it back to Olmec. Um... Eh, I, I, I'm just... <laughs> And then I guess there's... I, I'm trying to make this sound coherent, but it's almost as incoherent as I'm being. Uh, but <laughs> I, I guess they're trying to get all the kids out of the temple, and they bring in this like this demolition expert, and he puts a ti- he like, puts a timer, like a bomb timer, on the front door of the temple so they can get in. And the timer has the same text as the timer from the game show, and it's set to three minutes, and it's going to blow before they get out. It was just... I, I don't know. Sounds like, awful. All right. Because, man, I loved this show as a kid. Like, I wanted to go down to Florida. I wanted to be on this show. I thought it was really cool because it was, like, they always had, like, a hit. Like, I, I like history. Like, history was, like, the one subject in school I was actually good at. And a lot of their trivia parts of it were history questions. So I was like, oh, I could probably do halfway decent at this. And, like, the Temple Run doesn't look that hard. Um, and all the physical stuff. I thought it was I thought it was a cool concept as a kid, but you know they brought it back. Like as soon as they said they were gonna turn this into a um a, a a TV movie, I had reservations, and I gotta say I I was not overly impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Just like we're gonna bring back all the Nicktoons, but it's gonna be a live action movie. <sighs> That sounds great. That sounds wonderful. Cut and yeah. print. I'm yeah. so right. So it's so with with Double Dare's thing being lackluster, like almost like you said, almost half-assed, and then Legends being this thing, and it seems like someone watched a few episodes of Legends, and they're like, oh, okay, well here's all the the pieces of it. We'll just throw them into this thing and we'll make references to it and that'll be fine but so i have not had a lot of faith in nick in the last few years because 
they rely way too much on SpongeBob and their live action shows. And I uh, beyond Legend of Korra and Ninja Turtles, I don't watch anything on Nick. And Legend of Korra was over a couple years ago, so. Um, well, I mean, I haven't heard any kids enthusiastically talking about Breadwinners or Sanjay and Craig, and I don't see it ever talked online. Right. But Cartoon Network has the same problem with playing Teen Titans Go all the time, so it's not really... Could, yeah, mean, Cartoon Network's starting to slope down a little bit, but... Anyways, right? I gotta get but, going, dude, so... You can finish oh. this podcast yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I gotta sign off and get ready. All right. Well, I'll say my my closing sentiments and I'll give them to the people. Bye, so. guys. I love you. This oh. is what happens when you have to work for a paycheck. Oh, poor Kyle. Can't get All that right. ad money. Yeah, poor Bye. Kyle. Yeah. All right, Kyle. Bye. Have fun. Have fun at work. Okay. <laughs> so. So to finish my thought here, um, so so Nick is doing these things. Uh, we're bringing back their old properties. Hey Arnold's finally getting its, uh, you know, finale that it wanted to do years ago, which sounds great. Rocco is coming back. I heard Invader Zim's getting a TV special. Uh, I still don't know if that Roger Rabbit esque Nick Tunes cult you know crossover movie is still happening but it it makes me have some concerns because <laughs> it seems like if they're going to treat you know double there and legends which admittedly aren't like these huge pillars in nickelodeon i mean they are good you know notable things in its history but if they're going to treat it so lacklusterly it's not a word um i don't know it just makes me concerned for their future projects. Um, hey Arnold's the only one I really have hope for at the because it's like Craig Bartlett's coming back with a lot of the original team and the designs are looking promising and he's he sounds like they're letting him do what he wants to do so that's that's promising, I guess. But the rest of it, I I have like I said, I haven't had a whole lot of hope in in Nickelodeon in some time, and I don't know, I'm starting to. It's I, I I'm still not hopeful. <laughs> I guess is what I want to say. Um. So yeah, I mean, if you if you happen to catch these these specials over over Thanksgiving weekend, I'd be interested to know what everyone else thought. Like, if you were a fan of Double Dare as a kid, um, what you thought of it, or if you were like me and you're a fan of The Hidden Temple and you know what you thought of the movie, but Double Dare not terrible just seemed like could have been more i feel like they could have like rented out a a stadium or something or rented out like a state a a a, a stage studio stage or whatever and like recreate the set and make it longer like at least an hour because the whole thing was like a half hour long and just you know put some a little more effort into it i mean i appreciate they got the original host back and they got all that the all that start cast back some of them anyway um so it was it was was like it was a nice gesture but i feel like they could have done more and like i said legends was like it felt like someone was either only watched a few episodes or they were told like these are the elements of the game show work these into a plot and it was very standard tv movie for kids level i mean the acting wasn't that great kids it, it's weird when you get kid actors i mean you can only expect so much out of them um especially for a production this what i assume was low budget uh-uh. but i mean you got the so oh, sorry the hiccups you got the original host back and you got you know d bradley baker back as you know, olmec i mean they're <sighs> It seems like they were trying to be genuine at first, but then the more it goes on, it's like, <sighs> I mean, you're trying to translate a game show into a, a, a movie. That's, it's not how, I, I don't know how they expected that to be good. Um, so needless to say, I am not a fan of the Legends of the Hidden Temple movie. Um, 
I don't think they should have done it at all. I think they should have done what they did with Double Dare. Um, you know, just do a reunion special. I don't think it's at its 30 year. It might be 25 if that. Uh, but recreate the game show. I mean, granted, it's a little harder because you got to build a moat and you got to build the temple again. Which, I guess, if they, they built an entire temple, essentially, for the set of this movie, so why can't they do that instead? Um, but maybe if enough people say, like, voice their opinions about, you know, how this movie wasn't what they expected, or how the Double Dare thing wasn't what they expected, um, maybe Nick will, you know, do something else when Legend's actual 30th anniversary comes around in a couple of years. I should check on that. But, yeah, so, I'd, <laughs> I'm not really sure what else to say. Is like, these are kind of, I, again, I don't want to say half-assed, but it seems like it was not as earnest or put as much thought into it as they could have, I guess, is what it, um, so, yeah. Well, sorry, I guess this was short. I didn't realize Kyle had to go to work so soon. Kind of screwed around for an hour, so. Thanks, Kyle. Nah, Kyle works hard. I feel bad for him. Uh, so, yeah, I guess thanks for uh, checking out the podcast this week. We have, we always appreciate it. Um, not sure what, again, not sure what we're talking about next week, but, you know, tune in. Make sure you subscribe and all that stuff, and we'll, we'll keep you up to date. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Twitter, where we do all that, even though it's kind of redundant that I say these things, because I have Justin saying it at the end of this, but whatever. So... Uh, yeah, I need to go blow my nose because I'm not so, so nasally. I think it's called a cat dander in my house. So, well, guys, thanks for, for listening, and I uh, guess we'll catch you next week. See ya. Thank you for listening to the Ink and Paint Club podcast. If you like this episode, remember to share it, leave a comment, write a review, tell your mom, all that good stuff. Also, be sure to follow the show on Facebook where we post animation news and discussion topics daily. Thanks again, and we will see you in the next episode.